Hi everybody, welcome back to another Full Self Driving Supervised video. I am on the latest version of Full Self Driving 12.3.6 and I am continuing my testing with the auto park capability with diagonal parking spaces. Really excited to demonstrate this to everybody here today. If you're not following me on X, definitely check me out. John BBC is my tag name definitely go on there and you can see a lot of the content that I'm posting. I do shorts and a bunch of other videos on there as well. And I'm also on TikTok. If you're interested, you can follow me at Tech Geek Tesla. I'm in the northwest suburbs of Chicago and I'm about to take my car over to Woodfield Mall. You can see here taking it over to the mall. Very, very straightforward, very smooth. It's so practical in the Northwest suburbs. I use this software all the time. I can't emphasize that enough. There's a ton of utility in full self-driving. Here I have arrived. You can see the diagonal parking spaces. This parking lot has a two-way lane. So you can see I, the, the spaces here, I can park face forward into a lane here on the right. Someone's going around me and then they have to get over to the right, but someone can come the other way and park the other uh, other uh, you know direction now you're gonna see two spaces right here one two that show up on the left that is very unique throughout this entire test I really didn't have very many spaces that showed up as options now Arthur from X who is posting incredible content I give him a ton of respect he posted a video showing that you can only activate auto park when you're running or driving at eight miles per hour or lower so as long as you're within that range of zero to eight miles per hour you're going to see these parking spaces show up you can see there were two that just showed up back there and i did not take advantage because it was too early on in my testing and i thought for sure i would have a couple other opportunities and i'm especially interested in these opportunities coming up here where there's a gap like right here we have a gap there on the right i'm waiting for that to show up but it just does not show up at all so i continue going forward i'm looking for more gaps here an opportunity to park now in the past i have had success parking in a diagonal parking space here's another perfect example right there on the right although it is a temporary parking space and then here's some handicap spaces even those don't even show up as options but i've I've had in the past situations where it has allowed me to park in these spaces. And it's what's really been interesting is that even in the past when those would show up as options, you would typically move face forward going into that spot. But in the past, it would always back up into the spot and it would feel really, really strange because it, the angle is just not correct. For example, let's just say that I want to take one of these spots here on the right. You know, it's very natural to you know, pull into it face forward. But in the past, when I have had it work in the previous build, and I'm not convinced that this new auto park functionality is completely different compared to before, because even before it was hard to get these spots to show up in situations like this. But you can see this lane here is one way for sure. So, you know, you, you, you can only go down this aisle one direction. But even before it would have a, a it would really struggle finding a spot but it was very unnatural it would back up into the spot and it would feel really weird because it would go more than 90 degrees to get into that space so you can see i'm really struggling to find a space so i can say with a high degree of certainty that this auto park functionality is definitely not applicable for these environments i change over to a new view here because I went widescreen for some reason and the view um, just looks better in this format. But you can see as I'm moving forward here, a parking space does show up toward the end. I thought if I kind of go diagonally and kind of get toward the edge of the parking lot, I might have a spot show up and watch what happens. You see these cars, like there's a car there that shows up I put it into reverse and you can see a couple spaces showing up there on the display. That car that you saw on the right though, I'm having a difficult time identifying exactly where that is, but I select one of those spaces behind me and I go ahead and initiate the auto park. Now, 
take a look at what's happening here. It's really going around, you know, in, in, into this strange area. And I was just happy that there was actually a spot that I could select. But then once I selected it, I realized, wait a minute, this is not even a space. So if anybody can explain to me in the comments why it, it chose this spot, I would be very happy to hear any feedback because look at the orientation here. It is, I mean, even, it's even showing up these lines, which is really fascinating to me, by the way, that it shows up the detail here, uh, you know, kind of an overhead view, if you will, and, it, and it, it depicts it very accurately. But how in the world is this a spot? I would really like to know. But it, it does park itself incorrectly, which I thought was interesting. Now, getting out of the mall parking lot, it has always had a hard time right here in particular. And it nailed it coming out this time. And I don't know if this was just luck, but it got out of there just fine. In the past, it would not get into the left turn lane. And then it would skip a bunch of things that would make it really awkward if other cars were around. No problem here. Now, I have sped this up. This is running at 400% speed. Just so you can see me moving away from the mall and back into the suburbs area. Even the mall itself is in the suburbs area. But... I will say that if you take a look at this footage here, it runs so smoothly, especially in these areas that I have repeatedly tested, I feel extremely comfortable. Now, getting onto this main road right there, there was a green arrow, I believe, getting onto this road. Not a problem. Sometimes it is not a green arrow, though, and that's where you need to pay special attention. But on these roads where you travel uh, continuously, especially after you make those turns, it becomes really comfortable, I will say. And you can see the sun here. So I'm driving directly west. The sun is setting here. It's in the evening. I can't remember exactly what time it was, but um, if I had to guess around 7 p.m. And you can see it just handling this so, so well with the sun directly in, um, in the camera. And it's, it's hard to kind of comprehend how bright it was. Now, of course, the clouds are covering the sun now. But when the sun is facing you directly at that angle, it is pretty bright. And as a driver, you know, you need to put your visor down. A lot of times you have to put your hand up in front of your eyes or you need to wear sunglasses. But self-driving handles it really well. Now, take a look at this. This is a very busy intersection. This is Higgins and Golf Road. Now, the Tesla dealer is right off of Golf Road. But getting up here, we need to turn left onto Golf Road. And we need to start getting over. So you're going to see here in a second, it's going to start moving over. There we go. One lane over. Now we need to get over another lane into the left turn lane to turn on to Golf Road. And you're going to see here that it really fumbles for some reason getting into that left turn lane so it should be getting over right now as a human driver this is exactly what you do and here it does start to get over i forget there's actually one other lane we need to get over i thought we were already over there but yes right here see now look at this it's way too late to get over into the left turn lane and then finally it crosses over that solid white line which technically you're not supposed to do. We do get a little bit of alarm with that other car showing up as red which means that that was an obstacle but here it moves through with confidence before especially with the sun. Look at that sun glaring through the windshield. Previously, it would misinterpret that light. It's a green arrow saying we can turn left, but previously it would always have a hard time there. And sometimes we'd have some phantom braking in that situation, but it handled it really, really well, I thought. Next, I decide to test parallel parking. I'm going to see if I can duplicate an issue Chuck Cook experienced on his first drive. And I'm gonna hit start. So it's two spots in front of me here, and it's got some gentleman here fishing on the curb. Okay, did you see it going towards that car? First of all, look at the screen here. It freezes and everything disappears. This bug still exists with 1236. This has been happening for a very long time. I want to say since version 11. And it's really kind of irritating because you don't know what's happening around the car. Here I'm slowing down, hoping that 
these parking spaces will show up and I'm a bit confused because nothing's showing up at all. I move my finger around, you can see the car moving. So things are still interactive on the screen, but the visualizations just disappeared completely. I put it into park and then back into drive, hoping that that would solve it and get the visualizations back. But you can see in drive here, they're still not there. And then suddenly they show up. I believe this has to do with Intel processors and or hardware three. I don't think this is an issue with the Ryzen processors. And this really, in my opinion, has to do with a buffer it, it's a it's a buffer issue just a memory overload so i pull over a little bit just letting these cars pass from behind me and now to get into the details here of what i'm trying to accomplish i'm waiting to enable the auto park at a moment when there are cars coming toward me so that i can see if my car has any awareness of those vehicles that are approaching so this was a request that came in people wanted to see here's a car coming right now so i immediately go ahead and hit start hoping that I'll have some sort of interaction and then they go ahead and turn on that road there. So I'm like, oh, darn it, missed that opportunity. But I do get some something happening here. See the car comes and my car went left a little bit. Thankfully, the right turn signal is on so it didn't you know, interrupt them too much. Two cars end up passing by me as I'm in the middle of the auto park. But the nice thing is the turn signal is on. So vehicles around you know that you're trying to get over to the side of the road and or park your vehicle. So it's not a huge deal. But just the fact that it went toward that other car as it was coming on the other side of the road led me and leads me to believe that it's still not aware. In fact, later on, I tested this in the middle of the afternoon on a Saturday at a Costco. And if you've ever been to a Costco parking lot in the middle of a weekend, you will know that it is absolute chaos. I had people honking at me left and right. First of all, auto park was too slow. And second of all, it almost hit somebody. So I can tell you for a fact that you need to be very aware of your environment. And you can't trust it to avoid other cars. Here again, car is coming. I enable it and it starts going forward. And thankfully, it doesn't veer into the traffic uh, like Chuck had happened when he was doing the auto park. It creeps very slowly, it even stopped, it hesitated a little bit, but I don't think that that was related to any other vehicles around me. It just so happened to stop right when it was adjacent to that spot and then backing up into the space. Now, this is very practical, I would say, for people that are afraid of parallel parking. However, usually when you're most afraid of parallel parking, you're in a very busy urban environment and you've got a lot of traffic around you. Uh, so, you know, if, if you use it in that environment, it's a little bit too slow and you might end up angering people. So it might be best to just not parallel park at all. <laughs> but um, overall, it works well. You know, it gets over just fine. I've never been worried about curb rash where my uh, the rims or my tires would hit the curb. That has never been really an issue. So here again, cars coming. I'm trying to get some sort of variety here, some interesting scenario. It's going forward and that car again goes into the parking lot. So I'm like, oh darn. Here again, it stops kind of in the middle. That's a better example of it stopping uh, for uh, n no specific reason. And then coming forward and uh, backing into the space. And uh, it, you know, it does, a, it does a really nice job. Just yet again, it's a little bit too slow for me in my opinion but it does give you good distance. I did get a chance to test this in downtown Chicago later after this video was filmed, and you'll see that video coming up uh, in the near future here on my channel where it did a phenomenal job doing a parallel park. Actually, I take that back. I did not film that portion of the drive. I was backing into a space to get my filming gear out and ready for that drive. Stay tuned for that, by the way. Really exciting drive in downtown Chicago using 1236. Hopefully I'll get that out before 124 comes out, which is coming out next week, it sounds like, or the week after. This last auto park is really, really interesting. This is an example where auto park failed. And I was really surprised. I was not expecting this. You can see it comes forward yet again. I'm trying to see if it would do anything dangerous. Uh, there's a car right behind me. Turn signals on. As soon as the car backs up, they realize, oh, he's backing into this space and they go around me. But take a look at this. It gets into position and it gets all the way. Oh, it's actually not this one. I take that back. It's the next 
parallel parking uh, experience where it gets stuck. <laughs> Watch this, guys. It's crazy. So this is an example where the auto park fails. It comes forward. It sees the spot. I go ahead and select it, and I hit the start button. As soon as I hit the start button, the turn signal goes on. It moves forward. One thing to note with the auto park, it is always backing into a space. Whether it's parallel parking or perpendicular parking, you are always backing into the space. You can see here it starts moving back and it gets right to this spot right here. You can see I had a little bit of a glitch with my HDMI output, apologies for that. And right here there's a lot of clearance, not sure why, but it just gives up. So I hit the resume button. No, it says auto park paused, press resume to continue. But the minute I hit the resume button, it just, it won't resume. And thankfully, you know, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like I, I was in danger of, you know, hitting that car. But it's just interesting because I toggle it multiple times to see if I can get it back on track to complete the parallel park maneuver. But in this case, it just, couldn't do it. So this is an example where auto park failed. So just be aware that this is not a perfect feature. It's not going to work every single time. I do pull back out and I get honked at as I'm leaving the space and I'm driving out of this area. If you guys appreciate my videos, if you like my content, please indicate so. I love hearing from you. Please leave a comment below. Subscribe. It goes a long way to support me. I do have a Patreon. I love all of your support. Thanks so much. Have a great day.